Welcome to Urban Knife Guy. In a previous video, I shared with you my all-in-one hiking and bushcrafting cook kit. And that's this right over here. If you missed that video, check out the link in the card above or the description below. In the main pouch of my cook kit, I keep my fire kit or fire tin. And I didn't share it in that video because I'm going to share you the 10 items I keep inside this fire kit right now. First, let me share with you my thinking behind the kit. I wanted a collection of practical ways to start a fire. Many people carry a bag or a pouch with 20 ways to start a fire. You might be wondering why they need so many items when all you need is one of these. The reality is that people who do bushcraft are insane and find the hardest way to do something in the modern world. They would rather strike a piece of rock with high carbon steel for five minutes to start a fire instead of using a lighter. And I am one of them. The truth is, the spirit of bushcrafting is to use the natural environment as much as possible and equip oneself with different skills. In this case, to learn to start a fire in different ways. This is very useful when the world comes to an end and zombies attack. When it comes to fire, you need four components. Fuel, kindling, tinder, and an ignition source. Many people will carry some kind of tinder and kindling as a backup in the event they need to start a fire fast or it's too wet to process wood. For my kit, I use the rule of three. Three types of kindling, three types of tinder, and three ignition sources, and one item with overlapping functions. I wanted everything to fit into a tin to be well organized and to protect the items against being crushed in a pack or due to impact. Let's check out the 10 items in my fire kit. The tin is made of aluminum and it measures about five inches in length, three inches in width, and uh, about one and three quarter inches in height. And it's held together with this thick rubber band. I couldn't find a ranger band in this size. But this keeps everything very snug together. You can actually hear there's not much movement inside, not much rattling inside. So everything is very snug inside. On the lid, I do have a striking surface for matches that's put there. And the way I positioned it is away from the striking surfaces of the matches, even though uh, they're in plastic. Now, the reason I like a tin is another reason. When I'm outfield, I can open it like that. And when I take out the items, I can actually place them onto the lid. So in this way, they aren't scattered all over the place. And it's not like a bag we have to rummage through. So let's have a look at the 10 items. First, Stormproof Matches. I think this is self-explanatory. So I've got a bunch of these. And the reason I keep matches as well is for people who may not be used to starting fires in different ways. Uh, if they were to take my tin and they need to start a fire, uh, they would know how to use this. So this is an ignition source. Over here, I've kindling. And this is one of my favorite, uh, most inexpensive DIY types of kindling. It's basically wax jute. So it's jute rope, which has been cut into about just under three inches long, and it's soaked in wax. So it acts as a very long lasting wick. And then to use this, uh, I would actually pound it flat, fray up the ends, and then uh, you know set it on fire. And this goes for quite a long time, uh, ample time to get a big fire going. So this is kindling. My favorite forms of tinder is also DIY, very inexpensive, it's cotton or cotton wool soaked in petroleum jelly or Vaseline. And I actually have two packs over here. Now one full pack is six cotton balls, so there are about three cotton balls over here. So I don't keep them in the cotton ball form because I think that takes up a lot of space. So I tease all the cotton open, I soak it in the Vaseline, and then I pack it tightly in these Ziploc bags over here. And this would keep me going uh, quite a bit because you don't use a lot at one time. You kind of open it, tease it open uh, so that it can catch a spark. I have got a tea light candle. So this is my one item with overlapping functions. So the reason I have it is sometimes I need to keep a sustained flame. Uh, maybe I'm having trouble setting the fire. I can light this up and I can use this as an ignition source after I light it. Also, if it's dark and I'm trying to set the fire, instead of using a torch, I can light this and put it by the side and uh, that provides my illumination as well. So this is the 10th item with uh, overlapping functions. 
a lighter, self-explanatory, this is a big lighter with a flint wheel so that even if it runs out of fuel, you still can strike the wheel and get some sparks if needed. I've got a twist tie over here and that's uh, really just to put it in place so that the gas will not be released accidentally if it's pressed against something. So that's a little tip to ensure that you don't lose gas or fuel uh, from your big lighter. So that's an ignition source. Here's a tinder source and this is also jute rope. So th the jute rope I use for my wax jute is 10 mm thick. This I believe is 4 mm thick. And uh, it's yeah, really, really useful. I would say, sorry, this is not 4 mm, this is 2 mm thick. So it's 2 mm thick and the way you use this, so I've got many strands over here and I just use one when I want to start a fire. So the first thing I do is to untwine these three braids because that's how it comes together it's braided you kind of untwine them so you get three separate strands and then you can kind of tease all this open to fray it up i would tease one completely open to form kind of a bird's nest and for the rest i would tease just the ends because you do not want to tease everything because when this catches fire it burns very quickly especially when it's in a bird's nest form or what we call jute silk when it's all teased open so i want it to catch fire fast but i also need the fire to be sustained long enough to add some form of kindling to keep it going so i keep about you know five pieces here and i should mention this kit is also designed just for two or three days of, of use um, not i mean it's not going for months i would have to replenish this uh, but definitely for a couple of days uh, i would have enough uh, sources here to get any fire going so that's tin, uh, tinder for kindling I also have uh, fat wood. So fat wood is basically wood with a lot of resin. So this resin is fat. It, it's a fuel source. It, it burns longer. It burns easier. Uh, you can shave off fat wood to create tindling. But personally, honestly, I've tried this many times and it does take some time uh, and a lot of luck, at least for me, to start the fire with the fat wood shavings with a spark. And when I mean with the spark, I mean with a ferro rod. So I do have a ferro rod. This is my main ferro rod, which is not in the kit. This is with my fixed blade on the sheath. But I use this to create the sparks to start fires with the shavings or i try uh, not successful a lot of times now i know that there are different quality of fat wood so it could be just the quality of the fat wood uh, but even with shavings you know fine shavings i do uh, find it tough to catch a spark uh, but i use this very effectively for kindling i would i wouldn't use such a big piece i might split this and i would feather stick this so i'll feather stick this to create curls so that when I light my tinder, this goes in, catches fire, acts as my tindler, uh, tind tin kindling, I mean, and that keeps it going all the way so that I can add my fuel sauce. So that's fat wood and a very popular choice uh, for kindling. Over here, we've got kind of two functions. We have uh, both an ignition source with the ferro rod over here and we have tinder, which is a magnesium block. So what you do is with this scraper, you shave off pieces of aluminum and you need quite a bunch i would say yeah up to maybe a 50 cent coin a pile of it you put it all together uh, so it takes quite a while just to scrape that off and then you use uh, the ferro rod uh, to you know create that spark to throw the spark to light up the uh, magnesium i mean magnesium burns very hot so it actually uh, works very well as a tinder and um Yep, so this is kind of my backup ferro rod. As mentioned, I do have my primary, like my fire rod over here, uh, but always good to have a backup in my tin. And finally, last piece of kindling, and this is a uh, hexamine solid fuel. So this, I'm sure a lot of people would know what this is. You burn it, it's a fuel source. People use it with uh, solid fuel stoves. Uh, and to me, this is great backup because even if this gets wet, uh, it can dry off very easily. You can break it up, scrape it off, and you can burn it very easily. So that I definitely keep as a backup. And there you have it, all 10 items in my fire kit, three types of kindling, three types of tinder, and three ignition sources, and one item with overlapping functions. Let me know what you think, and let me know if you think I should add anything in to this particular tin. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.